and welcome to the 25th annual debate for the position of the Assistant Green Advisor for the President of the United States and English-speaking parts of Canada. Our first candidate tonight is Strawberry Red Maple Seed. She has recently completed her environmental service tour across Sub-Saharan Africa in hopes of achieving better air quality for the youth, working alongside celebrity volunteers Akon and Bono. Red Maple Seed has been endorsed by Bernie Sanders for this position. Red Maple Scene is a leading member of the Union of Concerned Scientists. Our second candidate tonight is Chuck H. Diesel. Diesel formerly held the position of President of the Environmental Science Club at Alabama State University for six and a half semesters. He is also a well-known honorary member of the Recreational Game Shooting Association. Diesel has been endorsed by the President of Philip Morris, Cliff Fleet. To begin this debate, we would like to take a question from the audience. How do you believe we should combat the negative effects of the relentless rising of carbon dioxide emissions? I believe that we must establish low emission <clears throat> zones in which the citizens of the United States and English-speaking parts of Canada are prohibited to own and operate non-fuel efficient motor vehicles where they will be charged a fine. This has been proven to work in other countries such as France, where it is estimated that pollution has you dropped nearly 30% after the creation of eco-friendly zoning laws. Well, I'm an environmental guy who believes in protecting the bald eagles in the spirit of America, in the English-speaking parts of Canada. First thing we're going to do is lower fuel prices, and the second thing we're going to do is ban hairspray. My wife might be mad about that one. Okay, okay, let's move on to the next question. Our Twitter live feed user, at ecofreak420, wants to know, what are your plans on implementing solar and wind power as a source of reusable daily energy consumption? Myself and the community I live in are largely committed to the use of wind power and solar energy. Every morning, on my way to yoga, I see a body of people living the green lifestyle. To bigger this moment, I believe we should begin with offering large tax breaks to be big businesses who are dedicated to using reusable energy sources. Well, I wake up every single morning to bacon and eggs frying, and I start my truck and drive over my thousand acres of property, and I ask myself the same question every single day. And I ask you, what would you do to increase reliable energy? Great answers, candidates. So now, let's take another question from the audience. Climate change is supposed to be the biggest threat to our country, with rising sea levels, and even higher droughts, how would you combat the effects of the climate change to protect the citizens? Thank you for your question. My first step in combating climate change is to commit the United States to lowering our carbon emissions. As we are the largest GHG emitters per capita, it is critical to reduce our output of GHGs. To do this, we will take a strong stance on reducing our use of natural gases, coal, and other forms of carbon-based fuels as a steady investment into renewable energy sources. We must prove to our worldly neighbors that we are committed to this goal. With this, I ensure that the United States does its part on the Paris Agreement and continues to fight for the environment. With the United States as a strong leader in the fight on climate change, hopefully many countries will follow. And as a planet, we will continue to work for a world where our grandchildren and their grandchildren can have the natural resources, health, and safety required to live productive lives. As you may know, only nine D7 percent of climate scientists agree on the idea that climate change is even real. Only 97? I think we should wait till we get to 100 percent. Ask the EPA, ask NASA, 100 percent, then we'll do it. The Union of Concerned Scientists states that 21 percent of greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. are caused by industries alone. What do you propose we do to decrease this e effect considering that amount of industries in America could continue to grow in the future. Some factories have begun using air scrubbers, which is a form of wet or dry filter that cleanses factory air, reducing the amount of harmful toxins being released. I think it would be beneficial to require all factories that run off coal to implement such a system, as they are highly prevalent in the top 100 factories that make up one-third of total air pollution released by over 20,000 industries. Yes, I totally agree, Ms. Strawberry. I think showering often is a necessity, and that goes for the air as well. The world needs cleaner air and cheaper air, and I think giving it a good bath every single once in a while just might do the trick. 
Remember, America, rinse and repeat. Thank you, candidates, for your answers. Okay, moving on. Our Facebook poll would like to know what you can do to treat the deforestation problem in the United States and English-speaking parts of Canada. My solution to this problem would be to put taxpayers' money into rainforest alliances and similar organizations. These organizations help to mitigate deforestation in the United States and English-speaking parts of Canada and all across the world. A small thing that we could do to implement into our daily lives is stop using paper towels and use cloth shopping bags instead of paper. So, Mr. Diesel, how would you respond to this question? Well, Americans and English-speaking Canadians, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a small sip of water to clear my throat. I'm a little hoarse today. water straight from the Poland spring well here's my solution <clears throat> at Costco Walmart super centers and Sam's Club we do not use paper we do not use cloth and we do not use plastic we use cardboard daggone boxes which is environmentally friendly good night America uh, uh, mr. diesel mr. diesel Okay, so we'll be back right after this commercial break.